Let's talk about number formatting, but not just number formatting, but how to dynamically apply it. For example, if you want to have a different format for your totals versus your other values. Now this has become much easier now that we have calculation groups. Now let's see how it works. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if you're new to our channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of the Power BI features and learn some more tips and tricks. Okay, so let's have a look at what we are trying to achieve here. So I built a matrix visual where we are showing the price development over time, broken down by different cities and countries. So currently I have a selection for the country Armenia and the commodity carrots. All right, so you can see that there is no currency symbol in front of our values. Now let's add a currency to it. So I'm gonna to go to my measure, average price, and then I'm gonna to go to measure tools. And then from here, I can choose the currency format. Now for simplicity, let's just go and say over here that we want to have a dollar sign, English, United States. And you see now we have a dollar sign in front of our values. However, as soon as I add a new country to it, for example, I do not have only Armenia, but also Colombia. Then you see that for Colombia, we also have the US dollar sign. However, what I would like to show is their local currency. And that's not really possible with the normal Power BI features. The only thing that you could do is to build a measure, a measure that checks, okay, what currency do we have for that country or city? And then we turn a certain format using the format function. However, this takes quite a lot of time to set up and it's not very dynamic. And the output, the data type is text, okay? Which is also not ideal. What we are gonna do instead is use calculation groups to apply dynamic formatting. So that we can show the currency in front of the values. And if we then have to show a different cur a currency for a different country, like for example, Ukraine, then you see that it shows the correct currency for that country. And with calculation groups, it is pretty easy to set up. Now let's have a look. Now to set up calculation groups, we cannot do it directly inside of Power BI Desktop. We need an external tool called Tabular Editor. A tabular Editor has some amazing features to make changes to your measures or add perspectives and work with calculation groups. Now, if you don't have it yet, then make sure just to go to tabulareditor.com, download it, and open it up. I've already done that. And you can see over here on the ribbon, I have external tools from which I can launch now tabular editor. And here on the left hand side, we see all different objects inside of a model. So let's go to tables where you see we have the commodity prices table and we have a date table. Now what we want to do is right click on the tables folder, go to create new group, and we want to have a new calculation. Now, what are calculation groups? Well, basically a collection of calculated items that allow you to do certain transformations to a base measure. So you see this often for time intelligence. So if you, for example, want to calculate the sales year to date, previous year, year on year, year on year as a percentage, and then you want to do this not only for sales, but also for, let's say, quantity. And then you need to do it for the actuals and the forecast. And instead of repeating similar calculations over and over again, with calculation groups, you just set it up once and you can then apply it to different base measures. Now, this is one purpose for calculation groups, but not the one that we are gonna focus on. We're gonna focus on dynamic formatting. Okay, so let's name this one then formatting example. And then to this calculation group, we're gonna create a new item calculation item and let's call this one format one and then let's create another one new calculation item format two now let's go to the first one now over here we can write our calculation now here we only need to write selected measure and then open it, uh, open bracket and closing bracket so selected measure just shows the value of the measure that's currently on the visual okay so nothing special here okay the, the interesting part for us is the lower part where you see we have the expression select and measure but we also have the format string expression now the simplest case that you can have is here to hard code your format okay so let's do that okay so i'm gonna start with a quotation mark okay so quotation mark and then let's say for the first format we just want to have one decimal so 0.0, .0. and then i go to the second calculation item 
And then over here, we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to type in selected measure. And then here at the bottom, format string expression, we're going to have quotation mark. And then here, let's do two decimals. Okay, so now we also have the calculation item for format two. And what we are basically creating here, this calculated group is a table with one column, which has now two items. Now the name of that column you see over here, it's called name. Let's also update that over here and call it format. And now that we have done that, we have to save our changes. Just go here to the top left corner, click on save, and then jump back to your Power BI desktop file and then click here on refresh now. So here on the right hand side, we now have formatting example. Let's open the table. And you see we have one column, format, and there's also still a hidden column for the sorting of the items, but that's not relevant for now. And we can use format now onto our table visual. Okay, so let's now take over here the format column and we want to apply it to our visual. Okay, so one option would be to add it to columns or to rows. However, then it would apply a breakdown by the calculated items, which we don't want. So instead of that, we're gonna take format and put it onto the filter section. And if I click now on format one, you see it applies now the calculated item format one to whatever is the selected measure in a visual. Now in our case, it's the average price. Okay, and it shows the average price with just one decimal. If I now select the second one, you see we have two decimals. And now you might think, okay, this is not something I cannot do without calculation groups. And you're right. Now let's take an example of something that you cannot do without calculation groups. Okay, so first I'm gonna to attempt to do it with a normal measure and then with a calculation group. So let's now create a measure for the average price. And that says, okay, give me the average price, but format it with two decimals if it's total and otherwise with just one decimal. All right, so how can this be done? Let's first give it a name. So I'm gonna type in average price formatted equals and to check if something is at the total level, we can use an if function and in combination with is filtered. And we want to check if there is a filter on city. And if it is, then we want to take the average price, but format it. So I'm going to use a format function. Then I can refer to the average price measure and then specify what the format should be. Okay, so use quotation marks. And here we said, okay, we want to have one decimal. So I'm just gonna type in 0, 0.0 and then close your format function. Now, if it's not filtered, so meaning it's total, then we also want to use the format fun function again. Then we can refer to the average price, but now we're gonna have two decimals. Close your brackets. Now, before I'm gonna add my measure to our visual, let's go here to a filter section and then remove format, the calculation group from this visual and then replace average price with the average price formatted. And you see, it does work. And we have here one decimal and for the totals, we have two decimals, okay? Now, what is the big downside here? Now here, we just have two different formats that we need to apply. Now, just imagine you have uh, all different kinds of currencies, then it would take much more longer to set up and it's not so dynamic. Yeah? So it might also be difficult to maintain. So that's one downside. Another disadvantage is that if you look at the format, it's text format and we cannot change that. Hmm. Let's then do the same thing, but with calculation groups. Now let's go back to Tabular Editor and try to do it with a calculated item. Okay, so here we have calculated item, number one, format one. I'm gonna go here to my format string and it's an expression. So that means I can also type in a DAX formula. All right, so here we can click on the drop down, and I'm gonna paste in the beginning of what we had before. So if is filtered, commodity prices, city. Well, then we want to return the currency string. Uh, we have one decimal, okay? And otherwise we want to have two decimals, okay? So over here we have two zeros. Now let's close the brackets and save our changes. Then we can go back to Power BI Desktop and here I'm gonna switch to my normal measure again, average price, and choose here for my calculation group, calculated item number one, format one. 
And you see, we have a similar result as what we had with the measure. Uh, one decimal for when we at the city level, and otherwise we have two decimals. Okay, so now that we know how calculation groups work with calculated items, let's have a look how we can apply that to currencies. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to express my prices in the correct currency. Now, in the data set, I already have a currency column. Okay, so let's have a look. So you see, there's a whole list of different currencies. Now, just imagine that you have to set this up with a switch function and then return every time a certain format. It's gonna take you ages and yeah, it's not ideal. Now, instead of that, we're gonna use calculation groups. And the very first thing that I did is to import a currency table. This is just a general table that I sometimes use where I have the code of the currency and a corresponding currency format. All right, so let's import this one into Power BI and you can load it directly into your model. Now, if you don't need all of the currencies, then of course filter those out. Now, if you're looking for a currency table like this, I will put a download link in the description section below, okay? Now let's have a look at our data model. Now here we have our date table, we have our commodity prices. You see here is the table for the calculated group. And here we have our currency table. Now the only thing that we now need to do is connect the currency table with the commodity prices table on the basis of the currency. Okay, so currency on code. Now let's double check if this is correct. So you see over here we have currency and here we have the currency code as well. So that seems to be fine. And over here, I'm gonna put the cross filter direction to both. Now by putting the cross filter direction, the commodity prices table will also filter the currency table so that when we drag in, let's say, city later on uh, the rows of our table, then we get the unique value for that city. Okay, so let's now jump back into Tableau Editor and go to tables and create a new calculation group. And let's call this calculation group local currencies and then add a new item. And this item we can call local currency value. And also here we can then change the name of that column and let's call this one then local currency. So let's then also type in the formula which is going to be selected measure just like before. Now the interesting part for us is the format string expression where we can type our DAX formula. Now here we want to have the selected value function. Now the selected value function will check if there's a unique value for the currency and we can optionally put also here an alternate result if not. And then we have to save our changes and jump back into Power BI Desktop. Now here we can go to the local currencies table and add local cur to the filter section and uh, so that it applies to the evaluation of our visual and just select it. And now you see that we end up with a table that has all of the currency symbols right in front of the value. And if we then go to the slicer and choose a different country, let's say Colombia, it shows the correct currency symbol for Colombia. And what if we only want to have, let's say, a currency symbol for the totals, well, then we have to go back to Tabula Editor. So here in Tabula Editor, we can go again to the format string expression for our local currency value item, and then just type in the DAX formula that we need, and where we can check if we are at the total level or not, just like we did before. If not, then we want to have, let's say, two decimal places without any currency symbol, and otherwise we can use again the selected value function and retrieve the currency format from the currency table. Then save your changes here in Tableau Editor and go back to Power BI Desktop. And you see now we have only a currency symbol when we are at the total level. Now, as you can see, calculation groups and items, they make it much easier to work with dynamic string formats. If you have any other interesting applications of this formatting for calculated items, then share it with us in the comment section below. And if you want to stay up to date on all of the things around Power BI, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. I hope to see you in the next video.